Hi, it's me. A new Sony lens on the market that's been picking up some great reviews is the specimen you see before you today. The Sony FE 16-35mm f4 PZ or power zoom G lens. It's a full frame lens for their mirrorless E-mount cameras and its price is $1,200 US dollars, so let's hope it's good. It'll certainly be an attractive proposition for all kinds of photographers, but it also has some particularly nice features for video shooters and vloggers. Its power zoom mechanism can work remotely with some electronic gimbals and other devices, and its internal zoom mechanism means you won't have to rebalance your electronic gimbal as you change focal length. Also, as you can see here, the lens displays very little focus breathing, whether you're zoomed in or zoomed out. And finally, that ultra-wide to moderately wide-angle zoom range really lends itself well to dramatic video work and vlogging, even if the lens's maximum aperture of f4 is unimpressive. This could be an absolutely brilliant lens for travel video work and travel photography and just landscape photography. Oh, and it can accept front filters too, which is pretty vital in my opinion for video and landscape work, not to be taken for granted on an ultra-wide-angle lens. I'd like to thank Sony UK for loaning me this lens for a week or so for evaluation, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. As you can see here, the lens is relatively compact for a full frame optic, and it looks very nicely designed, with loads of handy controls being squeezed into its body. It's made of plastic, but feels quite solidly built, and there's also a weather sealing gasket around the metallic lens mount. The lens only weighs about 350 grams, less than a pound, which is really impressive. It won't be weighing you down in any way at all. You get a number of focus controls here, an auto manual focus switch, and the increasingly ubiquitous focus hold button. Then there's an aperture control ring. It can be set to turn smoothly for video work, or it can be set to work with clicks, something that many stills photographers prefer. You can also lock that aperture ring either in or out of automatic mode, helping you to avoid accidental changes. The lens's power zoom mechanism is operated with a rocker on a side, or a very nicely responsive and smooth turning rubberized zoom ring. If you use the zoom rocker there are about three speeds, a very slow zoom as you can see here, a medium speed also, and if you push it all away, a fast speed. This is as fast as you can get with the zoom rocker. Grab hold of the zoom ring and you can almost crash zoom in and out just a little bit faster, as you can see. I found the power zoom mechanism worked really naturally for me, and it doesn't seem to make any noise as it goes. The autofocus motor works quickly, silently, and smoothly, whether you're shooting in AFS or in autofocus continuous mode. On rare occasions, this copy of the lens would miss focus, which surprised me. Perhaps that was just an issue with this copy of the lens? If you buy one, be sure to keep an eye on the lens's focus accuracy within the warranty period. In manual focus mode though, I did find it a little too easy to accidentally turn the focus ring when handling the zoom ring. The lens comes with a little plastic hood, which is reverse mountable. The front filter size is 72mm wide. You will want to use thin filters here. As you can see, my pretty thick Hoya polarizing filter caused some notable vignetting at the widest angles. Something else I should mention is that this lens does not have its own image stabilization. But on an ultra wide angle lens, it's not the most important thing, and Sony's full frame camera bodies virtually all have stabilization built into them nowadays. Also, well, this is a dream lens for users of electronic gimbals, as I've alluded to already, and advanced video makers might want to go down that route. Overall, absolutely top marks for build quality here. The lens is small and lightweight, with excellent electronics, and plenty of features to make it handle really well for stills photography, and particularly for video work. But all of that of course means nothing. If the image quality isn't up to spec, let's check it out by mounting it onto my Sony a7R 3 with its full frame 42 megapixel sensor. At the widest angle of 16mm and f4, we see razor sharpness and excellent contrast in the middle of the image. Over in the corners, contrast remains very high, although resolution is just a little softer, but still, this is very good image quality. Stop down to f5.6 and sharpness and brightness see a small improvement. 
The lens taser sharp down to about f11, where sharpness begins to be affected by diffraction. Let's zoom in halfway now to 24mm at f4. Again, it's razor sharp in the middle. The corners are just a tiny bit softer than the middle, but they still look really good here. F5.6 looks just marginally sharper in the corners, and again, the lens stays this sharp until you reach about f11. Finally, let's zoom all the way into 35mm. At f4, again, in the middle, well, you know. And again, in the corners, we see slightly softer, albeit still very good image quality. Stop down to f5.6 for a touch more sharpness in those corners, and yet again, the lens stays this sharp until you reach about f11. Well, what a consistent performance. No matter what you do, the lens is razor sharp in the middle of your images and very sharp in the image corners, so you won't have to be constantly thinking about getting the right focal length or aperture for best image quality. Although admittedly, the image corners aren't quite as sharp as you might see on some prime lenses. Ok, let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting now. Sony don't allow you to turn distortion correction off with this lens, which is always a bad sign, although if you shoot in RAW then you can see the lens's natural, uncorrected behaviour. At 16mm right away we see very strong barrel distortion indeed, and at f4 those corners looking pretty dark. Stop down to f5.6, f8 or f11, then those corners brighten up. Zoom into 21mm and the barrel distortion is reduced, and at 35mm it flips into very strong pin cushion distortion again, with strong vignetting at f4. At f5.6 and f8, the corners brighten up considerably. There's no sugar coating it though, this is a disastrous performance for distortion and vignetting, and you will definitely want to keep those in-camera corrections turned on. A nice little bonus feature of the lens is that if you zoom in, you can focus really closely in on your subject, which is a great feature, although less encouraging is the very poor close-up image quality at f4. Stop down to f5.6 though, and contrast improves greatly, and at f8, close-up image quality is excellent again. A very important question for any ultra-wide angle lens is how it performs against bright lights, because you'll be getting them in your images quite often. The lens gets a round of applause in this department, whether you're zoomed in or zoomed out, flaring is very low, and contrast remains high. And while we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. Again, it's good news, there's virtually no coma smearing to be seen here on bright points of light, so that'll be useful for anyone shooting at night time. Let's zoom out a little and go hunting for sun stars. You have to stop down to f11 or f16 for some subtle, narrow sun stars to appear, Hardly dazzling, I'm afraid. This lens is not designed for getting out of focus backgrounds in your images, although you can get there if you're close enough to your subject and shoot at f4. Generally, when you can get them, those out of focus backgrounds look smooth enough. And that's it! Well, what do you think? The Sony FE 16-35mm f4 PZG is a very consistently, very good quality lens in almost everything it does. It has great contrast, very good sharpness throughout, an impressive close focusing distance, and plenty of useful controls for video makers. Its biggest issue by far is that uncorrected distortion and vignetting, but admittedly those are automatically corrected quite well nowadays. The lens's price is definitely on a high side for an optic with a maximum aperture of f4, but you're getting plenty of nice features here, a good zoom range, and high image quality so I've no hesitation in recommending it to pretty much anyone. I've had a lot of fun with these new Sony lenses recently. They must have a big team of designers to get so many new ones out there. If you'd like to support me as I keep on testing them while getting a load of exclusive bonus videos and other content, then check out my Patreon page in the description below. And of course, a big thanks to everyone already supporting me there. Ciao bene tutti!